tell you what, I listened uh, Saturday to uh, Brother Gary and them's Friday night service, and uh, my, 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 you can tell they've been in revival. Amen. You, you really tell it. You can tell it in the testimony service. You can tell it in the moderation of the services. You can tell it in the spirit, in the expectancy of the service. And I just appreciate God. I want to... Uh, I want to be in an atmosphere where the Spirit of the Lord is. Yes. Amen. 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 An atmosphere where there's joy and there's peace yes. and there's a refreshing comfort from the Lord on a regular basis. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 I'm telling you, sometimes people come in and and, uh, and they don't mean any harm, but I mean, you just, how are you doing? And I mean, it's just uh, uh, four, five, six minutes of not doing good. Mm -hmm. But I tell you what, we're blessed. If we're on our way to heaven, we're blessed. Amen. And we need to remember that. We need to let that be our focus. And we need to praise and magnify the Lord. I was here praying tonight, and I just, I tell you what, I felt so inadequate, the prayer and the praise that I was giving to the Lord. It seemed like it just was shallow compared to what it needed to be. But I want you to know he's worthy of all praise. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, who's got a good testimony tonight? Good to see you. Okay. All right. And there's too much to be thankful to God for. So there's always there's always a reason to be grateful. Amen. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's too much. The volume that you sent down on each and every one of us that you took the time to, your list would be pretty long. Yes, sir. And it's important not to take things that God does for granted. Right. A lot of times we do that. Yeah. It's like standard, like with a car. Well, that's just standard. Yeah. A lot of people don't have what most of us have in here. Yeah. Right. So it's always good to be grateful. I thank God for my family, of course. Yeah. Thank God for you all. Yes. Uh, yeah. Just to come to this building, this like peace in this building that I love. Yes. Praise the Lord. I thank God for that. Yes. Amen. God's always been good. You know, you know, he, he can be the other side, too. Right. So that's why it's really yes. important to be thankful. Right. Yeah, it's but by the grace of God that you're here. Yeah. You got sound mind. Amen. Thank God for you. Amen. Yes, amen. We're glad you're here tonight. Amen. Yes, we are. Amen. Brother Smith. Pastor, I love the Lord. I just wanted to uh, wish everybody a very happy Feast of Tabernacles tonight. Uh, it is at 7 01. It's a little less than an hour from now. Uh, it will be Feast of Tabernacles. Uh, it's a very special day. Amen. I think uh, it'd be difficult to probably explain it, but believe me, it is a very, very, very big deal. In fact, I'll go as far as to say I do believe that it's Jesus' birthday. Mm -hmm. On this Hebrew day, the 15th of Tishri, which is the seventh month, you know, it says in uh, Leviticus chapter 23, verse 34, about the Feast of Tabernacles, that it will start on the 15th day of the seventh month. That is tonight for seven days. It's actually an eight-day feast. And uh, he came, you know, at first he came to Tabernacle with his people mm -hmm. uh, with Adam and Eve. And then many years he came to Tabernacle with Moses and his people. Mm -hmm. After Moses comes down the last time off Mount Sinai, the eighth time, he comes down on Yom Kippur. He comes down on the Feast of Atonement. And his face is shining. And five days later, the Spirit of God goes into the Ark of the so he came again to Tabernacle with his people 1,500 years later. I do believe, Pastor, I do believe, 29th of September, 5 B.C., on your calendar, which just happened to be the 15th of Tishri in the seventh month, is the day that Jesus Christ was born on the first day of the Feast of Tabernacles. He came to Tabernacle with his people again. And you know, a thousand years before that, when Solomon dedicated the temple, the Spirit of God came down on the temple, uh -huh. right? The Shekinah glory came down. Uh -huh. And that day was the Feast of Tabernacles. He came to Tabernacle a thousand years before. So when the Lord comes back again, and I do believe five days later, and he'll be crowned King of Kings and Lord of Lords on the Feast of Tabernacles, he will come for the last time to Tabernacle with his people forever and is a very special day. And you all will have a good time here on the Feast of Tabernacles. Amen. So it's, always a, it's always a full day. The first, the first 
say it down there. Always full moon. Passover is always full moon. So I believe Jesus was born on a full moon. I do believe he died on Passover on a full moon. It's not by accident. So the light has come, as it says in Isaiah chapter 60. So God bless you. And happy birthday to Jesus, Yeshua, Hamashiach in Hebrew, Jesus the Messiah. Amen. Amen. He's worthy, isn't he? Amen. 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 I'm, I appreciate it. I was thinking this week uh, just how privileged and blessed we are to have Brother Smith in our church. Uh, you know, I've got, uh, I think, 98 credit hours in Bible school, three and a half years, and I've not heard probably literally 95% of the stuff that he shared, literally. And that's a shame. But uh, I want you to know it has meaning. And um, there have been times that I've been reading and, and God lets the light come on just a little bit for me. And I really praise him and appreciate him for it tonight. And uh, it's good to see each of you here. And there's others that ought to be here tonight. And uh, I, I wonder, I wonder what the church world that is not really where they need to be with the Lord, what are they going to do when they show up for church and they realize that the Lord has taken the church out? And I'm not being sarcastic at all. I'm just, it's like, it's like our brother said, we take a lot for granted. And I thank God for the presence of God. I yes, thank God amen. for his promise. I thank God for his presence. Amen. It's not just circumstance. It's not just coincidence that the glory of the Lord comes and visits us around here. But it's because we come expected and we come with hearts that are righteous toward God. Realizing that we can do nothing in and of ourselves. It's all because of him. Amen. 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 Who else? I was reading... Psalm 100, it says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God, and it is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Let us enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. The Lord has been good to us, brother. Touched on it right, right when he walked in the door. He said that the Lord's good. We can't. We, we, it's the volumes that we tried to sit down and go through it all. It's the Lord's goodness to us. I'm yes. thankful that He's good for His goodness. I'm thankful yes. for His mercy on my life. That uh, He's spared me of a lot. I really am thankful for that. I'm, I really am. Uh, I don't ever want to uh, take it for granted. As He said, I want to uh, give Him the, the praise worthy of it. And yes. that, that it anything that it, that we're we're made of is it's not. Of ourselves and not right. him. Right. So I'm thankful for the Lord tonight. Amen. Amen. I'm embarrassed if I cannot remember your name. I think for you, I don't know how much. I just drew a blank on it. I, just, I remember one day we were in church, and y'all know Sister Craig come to church here 10 years before Sister Kim and I did, probably, and maybe longer. And one day I was already the pastor and everything, and I was here, and I went to say something, and for the life of me, I could not remember Sister Craig's name. And boy, it just, that wasn't the norm back then. But uh, God is helping me. He is going to make it better. I believe that with all my heart. And I want you to know, we love and appreciate you, and I'm glad for the presence of the Lord. And everything that's said that acknowledges him is worthy to be said. Amen. Yes, amen. amen. Well, I love the Lord, and uh, Pastor said something this morning in this morning service that really, really hit me, and so I wanted to say it again. Uh, you said this morning, you said, when things are going great and everything is going well, God is good. He does all things well. Yeah. And when things are not going great and we don't understand what's going on, God is good. He does all things well. Amen. And so we just have to praise him no matter what's happening because he is in charge, he's in control, Amen. and we can trust him. That's Amen. right. Amen. Amen. And he is using the church. Amen? Yes. Who else wants to testify to that? Who do Well, I love the Lord tonight. I thank you also for this fellowship. His love is so incredible. Um, no matter what 
hope we go to, we get that. And the mind is that I will never leave. Sometimes I hear that, hear it like I hear his voice saying it in my heart. Amen. And also he reminds me also of the reason why he came. Uh, he come for the right to pass. Yeah. Yeah. I pray this morning for the people passing by the day out there. I pray God they will come in. And they will know come to know Christ and say, Lord, the Savior. Yes. And also they will see Christ in us. Yes. Amen. And I just want to just remind them, Lord, if, if I get the chance that if anything that you're going through, he died for it. That's right. And um, he laid down at the cross and took it upon himself. So I just look forward to coming to know him closer and giving him my whole self, uh, like my brother, to all of me, all of my heart, my mind, my spirit. It all belongs to him. So if I gave my life to him, I belong to him. That's yes, right. Amen. Amen. God help us to walk in the spirit. Amen. That we not why it's important to walk in the spirit because the person that is not walking in the spirit without even realizing it is fulfilling the lust of the flesh. Right. And we've got to walk in the spirit because God is worthy and deserving of us bringing glory to Him. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Anybody else want to testify tonight? All right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, we're going to come to you tonight for the offering and ask you to just always be faithful in your giving to the Lord. And we thank you for your being faithful. Amen. Father, heaven, thank you, Lord, for your goodness. And thank you for all of your blessings. We look forward to the word tonight as well. We'll take up this offering. Father, we just pray that you use this in a very mighty way for your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Charles that we met yesterday, and he is, you know, right there with me. And I just, you know, I was all thinking about, I just got a job, and I was talking to a lady on the job, and talking to her about church, and, and she said, uh, well, I used to go to church until COVID, and then uh, she said, I lost my house, and I'm living with my son, and she said, but then she told me yesterday, you did well, uh, from let's go to work, she said, I'm about to get a house now, and she said, I'm going to go back to church. Now, it may be a lot to go get on around. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Yes, amen. Yes, amen. Praise the Lord. Yes, the Lord is in control. Praise the Lord. God's faithful. It's okay. Amen. 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 Got your Bibles. Turn with me, if you will, to the sixth chapter of the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah, verse 16, talks about the old paths where it is the good way. And uh, what kind of path are we on tonight? What kind of path are we on tonight? Amen. Why don't you turn there you go. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, verse number 16 of chapter 6 of Jeremiah. It says, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways and see, and ask for the old paths, where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. Stand ye in the ways and see, and ask for the old paths, where is the good way, and walk therein. Father, we love you tonight, and we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. I thank you for the blood. I thank you for the truth of your word, God, that leads us and guides us. I pray, God, tonight that you open our hearts and our spirits to you, that we will be sensitive to your leading, Lord, and we will... Be in complete submission and surrenderance to your will. God, help us to realize it's no longer I, but you. You're the one that can live it through us, Lord. We can't live it apart from you. We need your help, your strength, and your guidance, Lord. And I just ask you to encourage. God, whatever is going on in hearts and lives, I ask you to heal. I ask you to minister and work. God, is only you can do. And we'll praise you and we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. amen. Why don't you just keep that sixth chapter open there for a few minutes as you're being seated. You know, I was thinking, there's a lot of things you wonder how it is that a, a, a preacher uh, gets direction for a service and everything. And sometimes, uh, you know, we, we see a title. Uh, on a book. Sometimes it's a bumper sticker. Sometimes it's a lot of things. But I'm telling you, it's never as good as it is when it's the Word of God. Right. And God pricks something in your heart from the Bible. Mm -hmm. But I was thinking as I opened up and started reading this this afternoon, uh, you know, it, it's got a lot to do. Verse 16 says, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways and see. And ask for the old paths, where is the good way? And walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But if we go up to verse 15, one verse ahead, it says, Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore they all fall among them that fall. Therefore... They shall fall among them that fall. At the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. If you go on down and we just read the next verse, verse 17, it says, Also I set watchmen over you, saying, Hearken to the sound of the trumpet, 
But they said, we will not hearken. Therefore, hear, ye nations, and know, O congregation, what is among them. Hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor to my law, but rejected it. You know, there's a lot that can be said. I was reading this, and my thought was on chapter uh, 6 and verse 16, and then I thought about verse 15 and went back up and read that, and I've got daughters that I pray for regularly every single day. And, uh, you know, uh, you look around at the condition of the world today that the church world is in. Uh, it's never been like it is in America before. It's never been like it is in America before. I can guarantee you it never has. Uh, men's hearts are failing them for fear. But men are staunch Amen. To do what they want to do. Right. And I'm telling you, uh, there's going to come a day that the church that's out there that thinks they're the church in here, they're going to come in here to worship and there's not going to be any church in here. Ever. Oh, there'll be people, but there won't be any church. What are you saying? I'm trying to say the church is going to be ruptured and going to be gone. Pastor, you act like you're really proud and thankful for that. No. Hey, I've cried. I've cried. God, please, my loved ones, our church people. Yeah. Lord, let everybody be ready when that trumpet Amen. sounds. But Amen. People don't blush Amen. about doing their own will instead of doing God's Amen. will anymore. People live the way they want to live. People act the way they want to act. People do what they want to do. And they pretty well stiff arm God and say, take it or leave it. It's my life and I'm going to live it my way. But I want you to know something. you got to live righteously and godly in Christ Jesus. The blood has to be applied if you're going to make heaven. And Verse 17, also I set watchmen over you, saying, hearken to the sound of the trumpet. You said, Pastor, I'm listening. I'm listening. But they said, we will not listen. We will not hearken. Yeah. But when you listen only and you're stirred, but you're not changed. I want you to know there's too many people that are walking with God claimingly that are in depression, that are sad in their countenance, right. that are down and out, that are that are uh, being spoiled, if you will. Mm -hmm. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm trying to tell you. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, for he trusteth in thee. You need to get out and find you an altar of prayer someplace, and you need to be still, amen, until that mountain or that troubled sea or whatever diminishes, and God speaks peace to your soul. You say, Pastor, practice what you preach. You always tell about how your wife has got peace about your daughters, but you can't get a hold of that peace. Oh, I get it. I get it. I get that peace. I get it. I come down here. I come down here. I kneel in the office or the bedroom or the office over at the house. And I get it. But by and by, three hours later, 30 minutes later, two days later, the burden's back. Why? Because I've watched their life. Because I imagine what's going on in their world. And I see what they're doing. And they're, church, we got to do it God's way. Yes, sir. We got to do it God's way. We got to do it God's way. I want God's will. Yes, sir. You know, it's. Uh, this was written 600 years before Christ. And uh, Israel was in a declining state in the old past that had one time been well worn, are now in disuse. And they've been forsaken. I was thinking today, you know, there was a time that the word religion was kind of like Christianity today. It meant something. Right. Where now we say, are you a Christian? And just about everybody says, oh yes, I'm a Christian. Have you ever noticed that? Yeah. 
They're smoking, they're drinking, they're, they're carousing, they're, they're not uh, being faithful to God. Right. But they're a Christian. Mm -hmm. They're a Christian. But there was a time where you could ask a man and you almost didn't have to ask him. Before long, he'd let you know just by the standard of life that he lived, by his character, by his attitude, amen, by his demeanor. He was a religious man. That meant that he feared the God of the Bible. Yeah, right. Amen. America was founded on the Bible. Right. People think it's founded on the Constitution. No, brother, the Constitution is built because of the Word of God and God-fearing men. Amen. That wanted to do the will of God. But brother, I'm telling you, this blessed book is where the life was first found and realized. They, yeah. they, they left England and Europe to find freedom to worship God the way He deserved yeah. to be worshipped. Yeah. God help us to realize the old paths need to need to get back and be yes. uh, traversed in the world that we live in today. Amen. Amen. We need to figure out what God is wanting to speak to us, what God is wanting to say to us, and we need to be encouraged because do we not realize that most of the time when the devil makes you think God's trying to beat you up, God is only trying to encourage you. God is only trying to protect you. God is trying to lead you and guide you, not to get you to, to hold the line, not to get you to take and just walk straight, just so he can brag up there in heaven and say, yeah, watch them. They're jumping hoops for me, and they got all these do's and don'ts down. No, brother. God's in the way of a sinner. It's what? Hard. It's hard. Yeah, it's, if you're a transgressor, it's a hard way. Yeah. It's a hard way. The devil's going to steal, kill, and destroy if you listen to it. Right. you got to walk in the joy of the Lord. When you don't feel the joy, you got to listen to the Word of God. Get in the 23rd yes. Psalm. Yes. Amen. Find you some verse of Scripture that you can find admonition and encouragement in. And yes. get that Scripture and read it. I don't care if you have to read it 25, 30, 50, 100 times. It don't matter. Think about it. Meditate upon it. Yes. And say, God, this is what your Word says. I don't have any joy in myself. My joy comes from the Lord. My peace comes from the Lord. Amen. My happiness comes from the Lord. If your happiness comes from anything else and your joy comes from anything else, it can be taken away from you. Right. Hebrews 10 and 25 talks about there's a path that leads to the house of God. Let us hold fast the profession of verse 23. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another so much the more as you see the day approaching. For if we sin willfully after them, we have received the knowledge of the truth. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking up for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversary. Brother, that's the reason this morning the, the, the Jewish people were met with fiery serpents that bit them and several thousand of them died but because they were going contrary to the known will of God. Right. Right. Do you love the truth? Yes. God changed my heart. And help me to love you more than I've been loving you. Amen. It's a real sad fact today that only a small part of people that claim to be Christians attend church regularly. I thought as I was getting this afternoon, I thought you're singing to the choir tonight. You know what I mean? You're singing to the choir. There's... Just, just the faithful are going to be there and there's, and there's some that should be here tonight that are not there's some that was here this morning they're not here tonight I'm telling you they won't if people if people work their jobs the way they worship their God uh -huh. 
the company would go out of business in days or weeks probably. People come when they get ready. People go when they get ready, when it's convenient. Somebody come in. I mean, I got company. I can't come to the house of God. Brother, when I was raised and growing up, my daddy didn't even hardly give people a chance or an opportunity to stay home while he went to church. If you're going to sleep under this roof, you are going to go to church. And now, brother, people will come right in at church time and they'll take and want to fellowship and associate with you. And I'm telling you, it's not often that you met with a good spirit if you say anything about it. But somebody's got to, somebody's got to remind us. Amen. Amen. Everybody's got something that's important to them. Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. Are you tired? of walking the path of least resistance, walking the path that looked convenient a few months, a few years ago. Are you tired of where it's leading you? When are you going to wake up and shake yourself and become subject to the law of God? Begin to follow the will and the ways of God. Let God call the shots in your life. Amen. 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 Jeremiah 6 and 17 says, Hark, hearken, listen. Amen. Listen. Amen. Yeah. Glory to God. This is this is something that, that uh, he's trying to get our attention to. This is hot with truth. We need to listen. You know, I was talking to somebody here not long ago. I don't know who it was. It was John or Megan or somebody, and they we're telling their girls, hot, hot, hot. No, we're, don't touch, don't touch. And I used to do it. I used to let the oven, I would sit there and I would wait and I would wait until the oven door would get just warm and stood real hot. And I would take and wait and wait and I would say, hot, hot. And then when they touched it, it wasn't going to burn them or blister them or, or do great damage. But brother, I didn't have to tell them to move their hand because it was uncomfortable to them. But I'm telling you, it's not good enough for us to tell them, hot, and then us play with fire. It's not good enough for us to tell them to stop. And then yet we, they see us walking towards sin and knowing it's danger and knowing it's a wicked way and us continuing to walk because we're saying, I'm going to be all right. It's going to be all right for me. Let me tell you, sin is going to destroy. Sin is going to do damage. you got to get off to God. You better cry loud for your kids. Yeah. Or your grandkids. You better cry loud. Yeah. You better get a hold of God for them. Don't think just because they're friendly and buddy buddy and they give you big hugs and sweet smiles. Hey, mind of God, the master. Glory to God that I still wake up in the middle of the night. Sister Angel and I can't rest. I can't find peace. And I cry out to God and say, God, please, 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 wake them up. Shake them, God.
sound like the torment of the devil. It sounds like the cry of God saying, Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Love me. I know they love me. But 
there's things right now that my family does that I would have never done. You couldn't have given me $10,000 to do some of the things. Brother, I was just as much a reprobate and sinner out in sin as they were. But my mom and dad was my mom and dad. I respected my mom. I'd walked in and heard her pray too many times. I'd walked in from, from the fast food restaurant. I'd walked in from work. I'd walked in from wherever, brother. And catch her on her knees crying out to God. And there was a reverence. And a godly fear. And I wouldn't touch her because afraid of him touching me. That man, I feared him. How did it? They put it in there. They put it in there by the life they lived. They put it in there by the choices they made. Yes, sir. You say, well, I'm not living any different than they were living. We're living, remember, the spiral is downward. Right. You're going to have to resist that. You're going to have to rejoice in the Lord. You're going to have to love the yeah. Lord. You're going to have to praise the Lord. You're going to have to sacrifice. Yeah. When you don't feel like praying, pray anyway. Right. When you don't feel like loving the Lord, you say, I'm the Lord, I know you're worthy. Yeah. I know you deserve to be loved. But I just am not in a loving mood. Love him anyway. Because he went to Calvary for you. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. The family altar. Amen. The family altar. It's really not our life. It's his life. That he's loaned us for a while. They're really not our kids. They're his kids that he loaned them to us for a little while. We go along and that family worship turns in. Day by day, moment by moment, and it begins to lose its fire. It begins to lose that Israel ring, so to speak. Amen. The joy, the peace, the tenderness, the love, and the devotion is not there like it used to be. And we think everything's going to be all right. But I want you to know those kids are in class, and you're the teacher. You're the teacher. You're bringing them up. And they're watching changes be made in your life, perhaps. Amen. Sure, the times are changing. You know, there's all kinds of different times. There's the fullness of time, the times of refreshing, the times of judgment, the time of salvation. But I'm talking about, brother, time is coming. Time is coming. It is appointed unto man once to die. And after this, the judgment. Amen. Change is coming. There's a way. There's a way of salvation. The way of salvation is to yield to the Spirit of God. Listen to the Word of God. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, you say, preacher, you're not preaching as tenderly and as lovingly as you seem like you normally do. I mean to. I want to. I want to. I believe Brother Kenneth, when he testified a while ago, says God's this and God's this and God's... Oh, but God can be the other two. Yes, he can be the other two. He's a just God. Yes, he is. He's a just God. You got you to gotta find out why you feel like you feel. Find out why you're living the way you're living. Is it the way that God wants you to be living? Are you allowing the Holy Ghost to work in your heart and life? You know, we talk about the old path. There's a path of self-denial. There's a path of God's will being accomplished in your life. The life of a Christian. The life of a Christ-bearer. The life of one that is a, di- a disciple, a disciplined one. You know, we get up and we do and we pray and we read and we study a lot of times not just out of responsibility but because he's worthy and he's wonderful and he's deserving and that's where the problem I was having over here earlier. I said, God, I don't feel like I'm giving you what you deserve. God, I want to. I want to. I want to be real. I want to not be worried about this, that, and the other. I don't want to be worried about my kids. I don't want to be worried about your people. 
God, I want to be faithful to you and give you a, a whole heart and a dedicated life. And the way to do that is seek God for the old paths. Where is the good way? That good way and walk there. And that good way is not always a comfortable way. But it's a way that pleases God. That path of self-denial in Luke 9, 23 says, And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world and lose himself and be a castaway? Do you realize now you got people in your life. You got your own life and your will and your emotions. And people are willing and they're ready. And they want to go to church with you. They want to be this. And they want to be that. But it may not always be that way. We got to strike while the iron's hot. Right. I know some of you, you, you're here not because the kids was all for it. It may be in this scenario. I don't know if Brother Kenny's family always feel like going to church every time they come, but thank God they come. Yes. But be faithful. Yes. Be faithful. Hide God's word in your heart. Please let that blessed Bible. You know, I've got every time I got a, a, a book, I got one book that I gave $45 for. It was a, a book that was all laminated real good from a missionary. And the, uh, the husband put it together for the wife so she could raise money after he was gone and everything. And every time I get books like that, it seems like I give them away and lose them. But when I give them to people, I give them to people to bless them, to help them. It'd be so good if when I get to heaven, amen, some of the books that I've given out has helped those people find Jesus closer and make heaven their home. It'd be a blessing. It'd be a blessing. Are you denying self? Amen. Are you willing for God to Allow his will to be accomplished in your life. Are you willing to let God change things about you? He may want to change some of your friends. Amen. He can change and anoint your family. He can let them be tender hearted where they've been hard and calloused. Amen. He can change your finances. He can change your future. All you got to do is trust him right where he's at. One day at a time. Surrender to the Lord. Amen. Some things need to be done expediently. Amen. We need to repent. Why? Because the Lord is at hand. We need to remember times past when we did things right and times past when we did things wrong. We don't remember the things we did wrong to beat ourselves up. We remember so as to be sure and not make those mistakes again. But today God is reminding you to be faithful. To be faithful. You can be in the house of God regularly. Be faithful. Why? Because the days are evil. Why? Because you may not always have the stable mind and frame of mind that you got today. There could come a time that it could be more turbulent even than now. Amen. We need to resolve in our heart. We're not going to walk as other Gentiles walk in the hardness of our heart and mind. We're going to walk as much as we know how, led by the Spirit of God. And we're going to let God order our steps and direct our paths aright. We're not just going to claim to be a Christian. But we're going to be a Christian. Amen. I'm going to be the kind of Christian that's going to one day bow down before the Lord and cry holy. And if God judges me harshly and I don't get in, I'm going to say I tried. And what I'm trying to trust in tonight is not my good works. Not my faithful attendance to heaven, to, to the altar, to, to church. What I'm trying to trust tonight is that Jesus Christ paid it all for me. Yes. Therefore, he's the best friend that I'll ever have. Amen. What does that song say? He's more than I'll ever need. So much more than I need. Constantly. Helping me. Constantly, I want to abide in Him. He don't 
forget names. He didn't forget to love today because of what you did yesterday. He loves. He's a wonderful God. And I want you to know tonight, Jesus is coming sooner than we realize. I really do believe that. His coming is soon. It's near. And we need to be busy. Amen. Trying to help somebody to get right and ready to meet the Lord. Praise the Lord. Is there anybody here tonight that needs special prayer? You said, Pastor, pray for me that I can be faithful to do it God's way, that I can live differently than I maybe you're living, that I can have a, a heart of faith, that I can be resilient and bounce back. I'm telling you what, I don't know how many of you have, have prayed for our people that come to our church, people that, that love the Lord, people that want to make heaven their home, but hold them up in prayer. Come on, sis, amen. Y'all come on, those of you that want special prayer. Come on and let's let God minister to us tonight. Hallelujah. 